When germ cells from two individuals combine during sexual reproduction, a new individual is formed. In simple organisms, two germ cells may be quite similar to one another. In complex organisms, though, the germ cells are more specialized. One germ cell is large and stores food, while the other is smaller and motile. This motile germ cell is the male gamete, and the larger germ cell is the female gamete. This differentiation in germ cells needs the female and male reproductive organs to be different. This leads to dissimilarities in the bodies of male and female animals. This lesson describes the male and the female reproductive system in animals, specifically in human beings. It also explains the process of reproduction and the importance of reproductive health. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to identify the parts of the male reproductive system, identify the parts of the female reproductive system, describe the process of fertilization, and list various sexually transmitted diseases. Before we begin this lesson, let me introduce you to Eva and Spark, who will guide you through this lesson. Hi, I'm Spark. And I am Eva. All of us know that our bodies change as we become older. Our height increases as we move from one class to the next. Similarly, our weight increases as we grow. These changes make the body become larger in size. In the early teenage years of boys and girls, sperm and eggs are formed in the male and the female reproductive systems, respectively, in an unripe state. During this phase, a whole new set of body changes occur that are common to both boys and girls. This may involve changes in the appearance and proportion of the body, emergence of new features and the development of new sensations. During this phase, boys and girls will notice hair growth in certain parts of the body, such as armpits, legs, face, arms and the genital areas. At this time, the skin too frequently becomes oily and might develop pimples. All these changes take place slowly over a period of months and years. The time taken for these changes to occur differs from person to person. These changes are aspects of the sexual maturity of the body. So how do all these changes link with the reproductive process or even to our existence? As you know, the process of fertilization involves the fusion of germ cells. But this fusion is possible only once the male germ cells and the female germ cells are mature. Thus, sexual maturity of the body is necessary for the process of fertilization to happen. During the teenage phase, the growth in the body of the boy and the girl slows down. In the adolescent phase, the reproductive tissues begin to mature. This period in boys and girls is called puberty. During this phase of puberty, sexual reproduction in humans is possible. But for that, presence of a male reproductive system and a female reproductive system similar to the stamen and the carpel in flowering plants is necessary. 
The sperm forms a part of the male reproductive system. While the egg forms a part of the female reproductive system. The male reproductive system consists of sections that produce germ cells like sperm, while other sections take up the task of delivering them to the site of fertilization. In males, the germ cells known as sperms are formed in the testes located outside the abdominal cavity in the scrotum. These sperms have a long tail that helps them move towards the female germ cell. But why does this formation happen outside the abdominal cavity? This is because the sperm formation requires a lower temperature than the normal body temperature. But the other obvious question is, how does sperm end up meeting the egg if they are placed somewhere below the abdominal cavity? Like I said earlier, there are a lot of organs in the reproductive system that help sperm to develop and later travel to meet the egg. Let me explain this in detail. After the sperms are formed, their development is regulated by the hormone testosterone. It not only regulates but also helps in the development of the secondary sexual characters leading to puberty. The sperms use the help of the vas deferens which joins another tube that emerges out of the urinary bladder. As the germ cells move along the path of the vas deferens, glands like the prostate and the seminal vesicles add their secretions so that these cells make the transportation easier. The sperms then pass through the urethra and through the penis to reach the female reproductive system where the sperm gets to meet the egg. What is the vas deferens used for? The vas deferens continues from epididymis as a tube. The length of the tube is about 30 centimeters and it is muscular. The muscles in the walls help to propel the sperm forward. What secretions are made by the glands? The secretions from the seminal vesicle contain proteins, enzymes, fructose, mucus, vitamin C, flavins, phosphorylcholine, prostaglandins. The secretion from the prostate gland comprises simple sugars and is alkaline in nature. The urethra forms a common passage for both the sperm and urine as it is just one tube that connects the glands, the bladder and the vas deferens. Now, let's move over to the female reproductive system. In females, germ cells develop into eggs inside the ovaries. Females are born with a large number of immature eggs. On puberty, these eggs mature and are responsible for producing some hormones. During puberty, some of these eggs start maturing. Every month, one egg is produced by one of the ovaries. This egg is carried from the ovary to the womb through a thin ovi duct also known as fallopian tube. The two ovi ducts unite into an elastic bag-like structure known as the uterus. The uterus opens into the vagina through the cervix. How does fertilization take place? Sperms enters through the vaginal passage 
during sexual intercourse. They then travel upwards and reach the oviduct where they get to meet the egg. Fertilization takes place here. After fertilization takes place, the fertilized egg, also known as the zygot, starts dividing and gets implanted in the lining of the uterus. As the mother's body is designed to undertake the development of the child, the uterus prepares itself by thickening its lining. The uterus is richly supplied with blood to nourish the growing embryo. The embryo gets nutrition from the mother's blood with the help of a special tissue called placenta. So, what is a placenta? And how is it helpful? It is a disc which is embedded in the uterine wall. It contains villi on the embryo side of the tissue. On the mother's side are blood spaces which surround the villi. This provides a large surface area for glucose and oxygen to pass from the mother to the embryo. The developing embryo will also generate waste substances which can be removed by transferring them into the mother's blood through the placenta. The development of the child inside the mother's body takes approximately 9 months. The child is born as a result of the rhythmic contractions of the muscles in the uterus. Now, isn't that incredible? This fusion of the sperm and the egg has resulted in the formation of a new life form. It is not always necessary that the fusion between the sperm and egg takes place. However, the uterus creates a thick lining to support the fertilized egg every month. If the egg does not get fertilized, this lining is not needed and hence it slowly breaks and comes out through the vagina as blood and mucus. This cycle takes place roughly every month and is known as menstruation. It usually lasts for about 2 to 8 days. All of you may have pressures from external sources to indulge in sexual acts or get married and have children. But you must understand the consequences it may have on your health. A sexual act always has the potential to cause a pregnancy. Pregnancy makes major demands on the body and the mind of a woman. And if she's not prepared for it, her health may be adversely affected. So, how does one avoid the situation? During intercourse, there are some mechanical barriers that prevent the sperm from reaching the egg. Contraceptive devices like a loop or copper tea are placed in the uterus to block the passage of sperm. At the same time, contraceptive drugs could also be taken orally as pills to avoid pregnancy. Since these drugs change the hormonal balances in the woman, they could cause some side effects like weight gain, depression, vomiting and high blood pressure. Apart from contraceptives, surgical methods can also be used to create blocks in the man and the woman and to prevent the transfer of sperm and egg cells. In males, the vast difference is blocked to prevent the passage of sperm. In females, the oviduct is blocked to prevent the passage of eggs. These methods have side effects too. Hence, it is better to use a condom. During sex, there is close contact between bodies. 
Hence, this could result in the transmission of sexually transmitted diseases. Bacterial infections such as gonorrhea and syphilis and viral infections such as warts and HIV or AIDS are some of the diseases that are transmitted sexually. AIDS, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, is the infection that is causing havoc in humans today. Using a condom for the male reproductive organ during sexual intercourse helps prevent transmission of many of these infections to some extent. However, it fails if it is not used properly.